You can see an eight-foot alligator at Marineland on Villard Avenue, but you can't buy one in Milwaukee. The pet store has a special permit to own it. But if you are interested in something out of the ordinary, there are plenty of opportunities. How about some red-tailed piranha, a bearded dragon, a red-tailed boa constrictor, some molly uromastic, that's an African lizard, maybe an eel. You get the idea. If it's not considered to be dangerous by city ordinance, it can usually be sold in city pet shops. The Department of Neighborhood Services is responsible for most animal control activities, including an overview of pet shops. Uh, all pet shops in the city of Milwaukee are required to have what's called an occupancy permit. And in order to, to get an occupancy permit, we do an inspection and we do an annual inspection. Uh, what we look for when we enter the store is the cleanliness of the store, uh, the health of the animals. Um, we make sure that the food, the feed is contained properly. Um, no sign of rodents or things of that nature. Uh, we're here annually uh, for inspections. Uh, sometimes we get calls from citizens that feel that uh, maybe the store is not up to what they think standard is, and we'll come out and do an additional inspection. But basically, stores in Milwaukee are up to standards. Other parts of the city law governing animals make it illegal to keep animals in Milwaukee that habitually disturb the peace. When not on the owner's property, animals must be on a leash and under control. No matter what you call animal litter, city laws require that it be cleaned up and disposed of properly. Much more on the city animal ordinance later. Is your dog or cat missing? The city no longer performs animal capture services. Stray and unwanted dogs or cats, occasionally reptiles and exotic animals, are now the responsibility of the Milwaukee Area Domestic Animal Control Commission. Strays are taken to its headquarters at 38th and Burnham. We provide 24-hour coverage of uh, emergency coverage, which would include hit by car dogs, um, bike cases, helping with police requested assistance. We provide coverage uh, from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. for picking up strays or unwanted animals. We also do educational services. We work, uh, we just recently finished up with a training program with the U.S. Post Office and uh, training their workers how not to be bitten by dogs. Also, we work with Wisconsin Energies and we're looking at broadening that aspect for people that are dealing with that on their day-to-day -day job. Um, we also go to schools and work with children on animals and what responsible pet ownership is and how to stay safe around stray animals or un animals that they're not aware of. So those are some of the services we provide. Um, we provide euthanasia for owners that no longer want you know, to care for their pet and it's that time for and they've made the decision to come in and have that animal, you know, put to sleep humanely. Um, we also provide all the holding services for unwanted or even owned bite case animals. Those are the animals that are involved in bite and have to go through a 10-day rabies observation. The animal control facility receives an average of 37 animals a day, over 13,000 in a year. The vast majority are dogs and cats. This is the place to check if your pet is missing. Every stray animal that comes through the shelter, and you can visit our website, it's www.madacc.com. Click on Lost a Pet, and you can view the animals that are currently housed at the shelter. By law, we hold all animals seven full days. All animals are, that come in as a stray are held for that period of time. If you don't have access to a computer, you can come to the MADAC shelter and check through the list of missing animals on their computer in the lobby. You'll find animals other than cats and dogs here. Rabbits are a common sight in the building, and there are others. A wide variety of exotics that we do handle, anything from rabbits, hamsters, guinea pigs, on up to rattlesnakes, uh, alligators, cougars, lepers, and other 
uh, different exotics that are roaming around throughout Milwaukee County. Like many of the exotics, this small alligator was found after its owner was evicted from his apartment and left it behind. The shelter gets about 460 exotic animals a year, including a dozen alligators. They obtain them over the internet. Um, there's various ways of obtaining these, uh, especially the reptiles and things like that, the exotics that aren't your common ones that you would find in a pet store. There are times we've had a lot of iguanas that have been left loose. We've had rattlesnakes that came to us by means of an individual who put them in a box, left them on someone's porch, and a pillowcase put reptile in there. When he opened the box lid, heard the tails rattling, we got the call to come pick them up. Selkert says many of the animals picked up by the shelter have just been abandoned by owners who are often not prepared to care for them. And with exotics, there's a second concern. With the monkey pox that was brought in with prairie dogs, it's really easy to see that some of these exotic pets, especially the ones that are captured in wild and all of a sudden confined, can be bringing in um, diseases that you know the United States hasn't been um, experienced or that people aren't common with. Uh, you know, there's just a wide, wide variety of things. Uh, reptiles are real common with salmonella that you can get just from the handling and exposure to their dirty cages. So husbandry and then, uh, you know, zoonotic disease potential as well as, you know, injury uh, are, you know, good reasons not to be, you know, getting involved with exotics like that. Our whole thing is trying to promote responsible pet ownership and being a responsible pet owner goes, you know, respecting not only the animal itself and how you treat it, but also how does it interplay with society. When animals are not reclaimed, they are assessed for adoption placement. If suitable, they're taken to the Wisconsin Humane Society at 45th and Wisconsin. Well, the Wisconsin Humane Society is an animal welfare organization that looks out for the welfare of animals in our community. Um, we're very focused on education, we're focused on adoption, we're focused on our veterinary services for our animals here and of course our wildlife rehabilitation. So we're here for the community to be a resource uh, to help animals in the Milwaukee area. There are as many as 6,000 adoptions a year at the Wisconsin Humane Society, dogs and cats of course, but people also adopt rabbits, birds, and small animals like gerbils and hamsters. We showcase a variety of animals on a daily basis that are looking for good permanent homes. We ask that people uh, really do their homework before they come in and adopt to think about what type of animal would be best for their family, for their lifestyle, and once they make a decision to come on down and take a look at the animals. We have them work with an adoption counselor, so the counselor goes uh, you know, lets them meet the animal, goes through all of the uh, requirements as far as care and personality, that kind of thing, uh, with the family. Uh, they must provide proof of home ownership. We want to make sure that, uh, or landlord approval, that it's okay that they have an animal at their home. And we really want them to make a good informed decision. Uh, we see how they interact with the animal. We show them a variety of animals that might work out well in their family. And we ask that kids are available to interact with the animal if there are kids in the family as well. A lot of our programs are education driven. We provide programs for children uh, with regard to kindness to animals. We always want to promote kindness to animals in all the programs that we do. Our entire building is one uh, educational extravaganza. We've got a lot of information throughout the shelter that people can stop and look at and really get educated with everything from what type of um, dog might be best suited to a family to preventing uh, any problems from occurring to training, a variety of issues. So we're always looking to educate the public. While the Humane Society can help you, you can also help the shelter with volunteer opportunities. We have such a variety of opportunities for people. Anybody is interested, give us a call because they can interact with the animals and they really do provide a great service. Got a problem with a skunk in your window well? Raccoons in the attic or tearing at your garbage cans? For help with native or migratory wildlife species, you can contact a private trapping and pest removal service or another department of the Wisconsin Humane Society. Our goal is to um, rescue, rehabilitate, and release native wild animals. And, and uh, another function that we have is to help talk people through 
uh, nuisance problems they may be, may be having with wildlife, and also to help advocate for wild animals in the city here and help prevent injury, fear, pain, and disruption for wildlife in the first place. The Wisconsin Humane Society's Wildlife Rehabilitation Center annually receives and cares for over 5,000 injured, sick, and orphaned wild animals like this blue heron. It has seen some 150 different species of animals, many of them familiar to our area, many are not. We'll admit anything here um, from snapping turtles to uh, um, great horned owls and, and uh, white-tailed deer and all sorts of creatures, any, any native wild creature that you can think of that can fly over or live in Milwaukee County, we've, we've admitted here for care. A creature that's relatively sedentary, like a gray squirrel. Um, we, if it's an adult gray squirrel, squirrel, once we rehabilitate it, we try and get it back to the neighborhood it came from, because that's where it knows where everything is that it needs. It's food, water, shelter, all there. Uh, for juveniles, if we get in a baby raccoon, for instance, and uh, we re rehabilitate that, we would not take it back to where it came from in the city because it needs to learn. Uh, we don't want it to become a nuisance animal by being let go again in the city and trying to find its way and find food in the city. So those creatures will go out to private lands. In addition to helping animals in the wildlife hospital, the center provides advice to thousands of callers about injured, sick, orphaned, or nuisance wild animals. If, if people see healthy animals and they have questions about it, they wonder why is this animal in my yard or is it dangerous or not and, and you know, anything about it, there's a variety of resources they can call. They can call one of the nature centers around, but they can certainly call us and we'll talk to them about the natural history of this animal, why it's in their yard, what it might be looking for at a, at a particular time of year and, um, and how they can deal with with coexisting with that animal and ideally appreciating it. If they find injured, sick, or orphaned animals, or animals they think are any one of those three things, again, we invite them to call us and we'll talk them through it. Uh, sometimes they, they think things may be injured or orphaned. For instance, this season right now, in the summertime, we get a lot of calls from people who have found fledgling birds, for instance, wild birds, be it a morning dove or a uh, a baby robin or something, and they'll immediately jump to the conclusion that it's orphaned. And in, in fact, it's probably a fledgling that has its parent taking care of it, but the parent's not there all the time. The parent has to go out, find things to feed the youngster, fly back, feed it for a short period of time, fly out again. So we'll, we'll counsel people about watching that animal and trying to determine whether it's truly orphaned or not, whether it's truly injured or not. You can also visit the center, check out their wildlife gallery, view a behind the scenes video about the work of the Wild Animal Hospital, walk through the animal house to learn how to animal proof your home. We get thousands of phone calls a year, sometimes um, 125 a day uh, from people asking us, I have a, a chipmunk in my dryer vent, raccoons are getting in my garbage cans, uh, something's in my chimney, something's living under my deck, all sorts of things like that is very, very common. So we have both our animal house here. We invite people to come in, look around the animal house. It's, uh, uh, it's a walkthrough model. Uh, it shows various aspects of, of uh, actually it shows things that animals can get into that you may not want them to get into. Uh, raccoons getting into garbage cans, a simple solution is use bungee cords on, across the top of the can, prevent them from getting in there. Um, cap your chimney to keep animals from getting in the chimney. Some animals get in the chimney and they can't get out. So you do yourself and the animals a favor, favor by animal proofing your house. Animal shelters receive many calls from people who are not equipped to care for their pets, be they cats and dogs or exotic animals. Many of them are simply abandoned and the Humane Society says that's irresponsible. And unfortunately, it's, it's very common for people to just dump things in parks. They think, well, you know, I don't want this anymore. It can be free out here. Uh, and these animals are, from their perspective, not equipped for survival. And in, in terms of populations, in terms of the health of wildlife in general, releasing uh, a creature that could have uh, a disease that's transmissible to other wild creatures is, would be devastating. If this monkeypox business had gotten out into the wild, it would have been absolutely devastating for, for native wildlife. So under no circumstances should anyone release um, exotic creatures to the wild.
Staying healthy is an important part of the learning process. Vaccines can't prevent children from getting minor illnesses like colds, but they can keep them safe from many serious illnesses. Wisconsin's student immunization law requires that all school children be immunized, and now is the time to make sure they are up to date. Well, the first thing is, is that oftentimes we've added some new vaccines, so you may think that your child, children are complete on immunizations, but you should check with your local health department or you should check with your doctor and see if your children really are up to date. And the second thing is to act now, beat the rush. Don't wait until school begins or you'll have a lot of company. Call it an immunization, a vaccination, or a shot. It's all an attempt to protect your child against serious diseases. Most are given as injections. Some are combinations of vaccines, some are given separately. Well, they need the traditional things, which was polio and DPT and measles, mumps, rubella, but we've also added hepatitis and a shot for chickenpox called varicella. Also in Milwaukee, even though it's not required for school, we like them to have hepatitis A vaccine. And then there's Hib that uh, we give to smaller children under five. So um, it's a series of immunizations. So oftentimes if they've only received one dose, they're really not finished yet. In May, the district attorney's office sent letters to parents of more than 9,000 students who needed immunizations or who needed to present their records to the school. Parents who don't comply can face fines for not meeting the immunization requirements. It's called immunization checkpoint point rules and what it's meant to do is have our children vaccinated that attend our schools. So each year um, there are certain dates, it's usually after a certain amount of time that school has started, the school systems send out letters and say to moms and dads, you know, we don't have a record on file or we don't have a record that tells us your child has been fully immunized. So we want you to take your children to a clinic and, and get those shots. They warn them a couple times and then if they don't, they have what's called an exclusion policy and they have the children stay home. Hopefully they get their shots during that time and then they can return to school. It's recommended that you keep a personal record card of your child's immunizations. Bring the record with you every time a vaccine is given. Make sure the clinic updates the record. It can provide written evidence of immunization for the school. If it's not in the computer, they don't think your children have been immunized. And so even though you sent it, send it again or talk to them so you can try to update it. Maybe it's just a miscommunication and the, the record needs to be in the file. Sometimes you, you think your children are immunized, but we've added something like hepatitis B was added four or five years ago and that's what they need. And somebody told you at some time, you know, your child's all done. We don't tell them that anymore because we keep adding vaccines and then they need a new one. It's best to have your child vaccinated as a baby, but it's never too late to start. State law also applies to all children attending preschool or licensed daycare centers. They must be fully immunized for their age. Most immunizations cause only minor side effects. Serious reactions are rare. And health officials say the risks of the diseases are far greater than the risks of a serious vaccination reaction. If you have concerns, talk to your doctor or nurse. I actually have been around long enough to live through the measles epidemic of 1990 when we lost a couple children due to um, red measles. And we know that the vaccine can prevent this and we really don't want children to ever die of any one of these diseases. Chickenpox is a disease that can lead to some problems afterwards and that's why we want our children immunized for chickenpox. There's always some danger, but these vaccines are really very safe. We really don't have a lot of children have serious side effects. Oftentimes we have none that have more than a fever or a little sore arm, which we expect from these shots. For Milwaukee residents, the health department offers immunization walk-in clinics at three of its health centers. You can stop during regularly scheduled immunization clinic hours. No appointment is necessary. Or see your own physician if you have an insurance program that covers immunizations. For information, you can call the Milwaukee Health Department Immunization Program at 286-8034. Your child's health depends on it. We know that if we didn't have our children immunized, we would have some of the diseases that we protect them from. We do have some cases of pertussis every year. We could go back to having measles and German measles. Um, and there's really no necessity. The prevention of these diseases is really so important, but it requires that the children receive their vaccines.